There's a question about how uh, quantum physics um, influences the arguments for the existence of God because uh, according to some, uh, what we've learned in quantum mechanics seems to cast doubt on the reliability of the laws, laws of logic. And if we use the laws of logic to give evidence for the existence of God and the laws of logic are not somehow reliable, then that means our arguments aren't reliable as well. So a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, all one has to do is say the phrase quantum physics for just about everybody to run for cover. Because there's kind of a there's kind of a rhetorical play here that uh, has been called blinding with science. That is, if you throw s enough complicated scientific jargon out there regarding an idea, the more complex and confusing it is to the layman, the more persuasive it is. It almost sounds like, boy, he must really be right because he knows so many complicated things about the issue that I don't even understand. And there's a sense that we have to beware of that that just because there's a lot of science thrown our way does not necessarily mean that the point has been made, especially if we don't understand the details. We can't just give the benefit of the doubt to the person with the complicated jargon. Secondly, when it comes to quantum physics, as many quantum physicists have said, virtually nobody even understands that kind of stuff. It is strange, it is unusual, it is weird which means, by their own admission then, we should be careful about making dogmatic assumptions about the interpretation that some give to the equations. And in fact, there are something like 10 different, equation, uh, 10 different possible interpretations to the, uh, to, to the equations of quantum physics. That is, how do these equations actually map themselves out in reality? And only one of them, the so-called Copenhagen interpretation, is, is the one that calls into question, as I understand it, these, these issues of the laws of logic. So that might be one interpretation, but it isn't the only one that has to be accepted. But there's another problem that's deeper, because if it calls into question the laws of logic by which we verify other things, like the existence of God, it calls into, uh, into question those same laws of logic by which we verify anything, even the ideas of quantum physics. I mean, think about it. Um, one of the laws of logic is the law of identity. A equals A. Or another way of putting it is a thing is itself and not something else. A thing is identical to itself. Now, it seems so commonplace as why would we even mention such a thing? But notice what, it's, what it does for us. It means that when we talk about a particular thing, that thing is distinguished from everything that it's not. It, it, it gives us the ability to individuate things. Now, if that law of logic didn't apply to some particular topic, we could never know what it is we're talking about because the referent, the thing we're talking about, could be jumping all around to different things if the law of identity doesn't apply, which means then if the laws of logic don't apply in virtue of quantum physics, we can't even talk about quantum physics because quantum physics isn't a specific thing. It could be this and then jump and be something else because the law of identity doesn't apply. Notice also the law of non-contradiction. Um, a cannot be not A at the same time and in the same way. So uh, applying this to say God. God cannot be personal and not personal. He's either personal or not personal. There's no other alternative given the law of excluded middle. Uh, either A or non-A. So these two laws work together. But notice how they also work with quantum physics. If we want to say that quantum physics is true, that the laws of logic don't apply, then they won't apply to the laws of physics, which means we can equally say that the laws of physics are not true in the same sense that we're saying they're true. So this just leads to absolute chaos. Knowledge would be impossible if the laws of logic don't apply. And if they don't apply, they'd even undermine quantum physics. So I think this is a dead-end enterprise, but it's the kind of thing that gets Christians unsettled when smart people with a lot of religious jargon take a shot at their uh, theistic point of view and their theistic arguments based on the sophisticated understanding they have of quantum physics. And they don't even realize that their arguments undermine their own view. So it's a classic case of suicide.